Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. This is now part 18 and the final part of this build of this beautiful little kit from Airfix. This is the Airfix K2 Ambulance, as you all know. Now this started off as a beginner's build and then it got a bit out of hand because it's gone together so lovely, I thought, you know, it, it just it just des deserves a bit more. So what I've tried to do is rather than ha have it as a beginner's build, is have it as a build that beginners can follow and maybe those that are fairly new to the hobby can pick up some hints and tips on the way and take their modeling to that next level sort of thing um so what we have here is as, as we had before it's all coated and everything everything's sealed in we've got some blemishes on there from the oils and everything windows are still masked up remember never unmask your windows until the very end because if you want to go in with some flat varnish or whatever then you're gonna have to mask your windows again so whatever um so at the moment, as we can see, it's all clean. There's one more little addition I've done, which um, some of you may want to have a go at, some of you may not. I've already done it because I have to do it under the magnifier because it's very, very detailed, fine work. Uh, so I'll tell you what I've done. I'll show you what I've done. But basically, here we go. We have open doors. Now, the kit does not give you the option of having opening doors. I've done this myself. So I will show you what I used to do it and how I did it. So let's start by opening these doors up. Key of no fingernails. We'll take them off. Okay, so on the body, you have the four hinges here. One, two, three, four. They are separate parts, so you need to be very careful when you're drilling them. Now, I've only just done this, so it needs touching up. That's why you can see tan plastic through there. But basically, um, I've drilled through them with a 0.4 drill. What I do is use a pinpoint, like such, a pin, a pinpoint, and then come along and mark the centre of the hole as near as damn it. And then using a 0.4 drill, I use these things from Amazon, which are bloody awful. You're much better off with these. Okay, these drills here are far better. But when you buy them, make sure the micro box is all in capital letters and preferably light blue plastic box. And also they should be about £10. If they're like 199 or 250 or something in the UK, don't touch them with a barge pole, they're junk. Um, they're, I, I've got a set here, I think I've got them here still. Uh, these here with the gold coating on, if you actually measure them size for five size, they're nothing like what they should be. You can see those are all the same length, those first four. Well, there's one missing, um, so there should be the first five. And they're like they're all like 0.4. So it should be 0.3, 3, 5, 4, 4, 5, 4. That's easier for you to say. Um, so yeah, go for them like this with the micro box. If they've got nothing written on there at all, that, don't touch them. They're not worth having. But these are great. And the only reason that I've got more than one box of these is because if you snap them, then you've had it. So that's why I've got more than one box of them. But um, they are brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. They're be much better at drilling than these things are from Amazon. They don't come in a box like this. But the, these these things here, you, I don't know if you can see that. They've got a very, if I show you a bigger one, that'd be easier. They've got a very, very high helix angle. So when you drill, they kind of, they want to, their way. I guess they're fine with a tool, but when you're drilling them by hand, they want to sort of corkscrew themselves in. And if you are drilling something fine like that, you'll be very careful not to split it open because it's not trying to drill it, it's trying to screw it. And it's, it's not, you know, a piece of chipboard. If you just put a self tapper straight to a piece of chipboard, end on it just splits it open and that's what these will try and do so i'd avoid them like the plague i don't like using machine tools for drilling holes in plastic um and i wish i hadn't bought them but you know I, it's what i've got and it's what i use so i drilled them out to 0.4 and the reason i've drilled them 0.4 is to allow for a bit of play because obviously your positions are not going to be precise and you know with the doors closing up as neatly as they do you need some, um, you know, it needs to be very precise and you ain't going to get it precise by doing it by eye drilling it through the centre. You can probably just about see on there where I've drilled them. If you can or not, but anyway. Um, and then I've done the same with the doors. Now, be again, be careful with the doors because this is moulded as one piece. It's not a separate hinge. Just put your finger behind it and then drill it. And then I've got some 0.33 nickel silver rod here in my metal bin things I would have used 0 0.5 0 0.4 whatever but that's the reason I drilled them 0 0.3 0 0.4 is because now we've got some clearance so it can be you know it's got some some clearance for alignment and all we're going to do is we've got the pins on there as you can see I've glued super glued them in 
and then we could just drop them down would you believe I've gone the exactly the same length of that just drop them in the hole oops missed the top one I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to take something off of this bottom one so I don't have to thread them both in at the same time so I'll thread the top one in there thread the bottom one in there and then we have our hinged door okay so there we go now I have seen pictures of these with the doors hinged right back the kit won't allow you to do that because of the way the hinges are they don't come out at 45 degrees like they probably should they go straight back so even if you're just going to glue the doors you won't be able to have them flat back so if you're going to do it in a diorama or something you'll have to position your doors you know slightly differently or cut your hinges and move them out but um that one's gone in that one's gone in so there we go just like that okay so we now have hinged opening doors i may glue them in position i may not but now that we've got that like that what i can do is just come these are old tamiya cutters don't worry i'm not using new ones don't use new tamiya cutters for cutting metal just gonna put my finger over that so it doesn't ping off get my bin and do the same on this one that one pinged off anyway same on this one, just come in, that one went in the bin, and that one went in the bin, there we go. So now we've got the hinges and we can't see any metal there or anything, we can come with some green paint, touch them up, but we now have hinged doors. So it's that easy, you also see me do it with steering and stuff, I've actually done some other videos on a chassis that you probably haven't seen yet, how to do make steering work and everything. But uh, there we go, there's our hinge doors. So now we have the choice of having them open or closed. And that will probably work for the gecko kit as well. I'll have, I'll have a look at that one. But um, there we go. Oh, and by the way, I have since discovered through talking to different people, it would appear that the Airfix grill is correct. The gecko one is incorrect. The Greco one is much wider at the front and much flatter. Now, whether it's a later version or something, I don't know, but this. It just doesn't look right to me and this one does so talk to some people about it and apparently it is the airfix one that is correct so there we go now we need to start making this thing look a bit dirty so we need to think about how we're going to make it look dirty how we're going to make it look dusty i'm not going to plaster it in mud like it's just been through a field because they probably wouldn't be like that but it would probably have some mud in the wheel arches mud in the tires and stuff so we're going to dirty up the wheels dirty up the tires and uh, get some dust going on it something i've just noticed these rear mud flaps, I haven't painted them. They're they're primed in black, but they've been oversprayed with green, so we've got to paint them. So I'm going to use this Ravel number 06 tar black. Um, get an upturned Tamiya paint jar, which is a great little receptacle for mixing a drop of paint in. Put a drop of the paint in there. That's all we need, a tiny little bit, and then a drop of water. There we go. So that's going to thin that about 50-50. So we've got a nice thin wash there. Revell paint is great for this sort of thing. Nice and thin. And then just brush that on there. Just like so. And because it's thin, it wicks into all the corners. It's lovely. There we go. Same on the other side. Doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be covering it in dirt and mud and everything. But... Uh, you may as well try and get it as good as you can, eh? As they say, the old English saying, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So again, get that up into that back of that mud guard. Just brush that down. You can see within seconds it's drying already. And there we go, there's our mud flaps done. Doesn't have any mud flaps on the front. There's nothing else here that needs to be painted black. Just before we do anything else, I'm just going to check there's nothing on the tyres that needs to be touched up. There we go. We've got a bit there and a bit there. So this isn't the same colour. I used anthracite, didn't I, for these tyres. This is tar black. It's the same sort of thing. It's, uh, it's basically a very, very dark grey. So there we are. Right. So I'm going to let that dry. You can see how 
fast it dries. This is going matte already. And um, I really do like these Ravel paints. If you want to go over it again, you can see here, even before it's dry, we can go over and give it another coat, which is so much better than using the Tamiya paints because they tend to lift off what you put underneath. So, you know, you can just, just whack it on, <laughs> as they say. I've been experimenting here with making some mud. More like that in a minute. Um, as I've always said, I am not very good at weathering. Um, in fact, I'm awful at it. Uh, and I must confess, I'm not sure. I don't remember having ever done mud in the way I'm going to do it now. Something I've done in the past, which I'm not going to do today, I saw it in a Tamiya magazine and thought I'd give it a go. If you're a guy and you shave an electric razor, you know you get the little stubbly bits in the razor. And if you mix that in with some matte brown paint and daub it on, it makes great mud. But I'm not going to do that because it's probably not very nice. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to use some different products and uh, we'll see how we can get along with doing it that way. So there's that paint pot cleaned up. OP70, one of my favourites. So, when those mud flaps are dry, we'll come back and we'll look at doing some mud. And we'll get these uh, wheels and tyres dirtied up as well. Right, so here we go. Um, as I say, mud is something I haven't really played with very much in my uh, modelling life because I've generally done aircraft and aircraft don't generally tend to be muddy. So, this is going to be an experiment and whether this works or not, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So, um, what I've got here is some pigments. I've got the... The Flory the Pro Modeler, you can tell how old these are. Pro Modeler is what Flory used to be called. And then, you know, Monogram do a range of kits. Pro Modeler, where they have some resin or photo etch in them. And they got a bit funny. And uh, Ravel Monogram got a bit funny with Phil Flory. It caused a bit of upset at the time. He changed himself to, Fl he changed his name to Flory Models. But he used to be called Pro Modeler. And these are basically great big tubs of pigment. They are very, very similar to the pigments you get from AK and MIG and that you've seen me use before on the inside. So I thought I'd give these a go. I've also got here one of the Modeler's World pigments. Uh, this is Heavy European Earth and it's a very dark brown colour. Um, Ed from Premium Hobbies sent me a couple of these to sample. He sent me a rust, rust? A rust colour, this earth colour and a black. So obviously really all that's any use to me here is the earth colour. So um, Basically, I've got a green earth as well here, which is like a, a sort of a, a lighter colour mud. So I think what I'm going to do is make a mixture of the two. Now, I'm thinking what I want to do is get a mud texture into the tyres and onto the fenders and stuff. And then sort of rub it away. I'm going to use a really cheap, awful, horrible brush because it's probably going to ruin the brush. Um, and I want to get this mud on there and then sort of remove most of it and stuff. And as I say, you're going to be watching. So this is a beginner's video. And really, with respect to this, I'm a beginner because I haven't really played with it very much. But I know we're going to get a good um, a good uh, solution, a good um, result, because it's what I want to do. So let's see how we get on. And then if I mess up, you know what not to do. And if it comes out awesome, you know what to do. And I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of people that are going to comment below and tell me I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong, I've done something else wrong. And that's great. I'm, uh, I'm all ears. So um, so basically, we'll put our bits and pieces aside here and we'll look at mixing up some of this uh, mess, if you like. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some of this. This is um, Ammo Ultra Glue, but I'm sure you could use any PVA, really. Um, I'm just I'm going to use this because I've got it here um, and I'm going to put some in here now it's not wanting to come off the brush particularly easily and what I'm going to do is not make up too much I'm just going to make up some for now it's quite late at night at the moment I won't stand up so I can take my hands away and oh come on play ball please just want to put this lid on here. 
Right, there we go. So we've got that there in there now. So I'm going to add a drop of water to thin it down. So it's probably volume by volume, it's probably 50 50. And then we've got a nice thin slurry, as you can see there. Okay, and get the glue off the sides. We don't want any lumps and bumps. And I'm making this a little bit thin because I want to um, get it into the tread of the tyres and then rub it off if you like. I want to kind of get, rather than just have dust in the tyres, I want to get some sort of substance in the grooves of the tyres like dried in, caked in mud or whatever. But as I say, I'm not going to do this muddy like it's just come off a, a Russian battlefield. Um, Let's just put that there, so the pain in the ass with it falling over. So I'm going to use some of this green earth, first of all. Right, so we're going to get some of this in there. So we'll get plenty of that in the brush. Mix it around. As we can see, it's starting to make a kind of... I think I need something to put this in with, because I don't think I'm getting enough in here. There we go. So we're starting to get like a muddy kind of slurry going. And that's a fairly light coloured mud. Let's put a bit more in there. Put back on that one. And now I'm going to use some of this Modeler's World one. As I say, this is available from Premium Hobbies. And there we go. We've now got a nice dark coloured sort of wet looking mud it's a right old mess going on in here but I'm not really worried about that so there we go we've got a dark coloured muddy slurry all right and I would recommend getting these pigments for doing this sort of stuff rather than the mig ones or whatever because these are very reasonably priced and you get a lot of them Whereas, you know, if you get the little MIG ones, you get a tiny little pot. The AK stuff is pretty good. The ammo stuff, sorry, is pretty good. You get a decent amount in there. But these pots, you do get a lot. Um, so there we go. We got this sort of dark, muddy sort of look. And it's quite thin. So what I want to do is just paint this onto the tyres. And get it into all the treads and everything and I'm probably gonna get this all over my fingers but I'm not worried because it's water based so it's gonna be safe what I don't want to do is get loads of mud onto the wheel centers because we're gonna deal with them after so as you can see I'm, it's like a very thick paint so I'm just brushing it on so it gets into the treads I don't want to I'm not worried about covering the outer surface. I want to get it into the treads. And now you can see why I left the wheels off. Because doing this sort of stuff, whatever sort of weathering you're doing with wheels, it's much easier to do it off the vehicle than it is on. So we Just make sure we push all that into there. So now we've got one filthy, dirty, muddy tyre. And as you can see... looks quite realistic as though it's just been driven through a muddy or down a muddy lane or something now i'm just going to brush some of that off because there's a little bit of excess on there and then i'm going to go on and do the other three so i'll turn the camera off and then i'll come back when they're done all right so there's the first one we did and we can see that already after a few minutes the mud is starting to dry on the tire and it's starting to look quite realistic now i don't want to get too much mud on these wheel centers I'm going to get a cotton bud and just wipe away the mud. I think I'm going to need a drop of water actually to do this. So let me get another, let's use this, let's use this Tamiya pot. Get some water on the cotton bud. And just wipe away the mud from the tread. Because as you know, as soon as the vehicle moves along, whatever, unless it's in a bloody mud bog, the tread will not have loads of mud or 
staining it. So we can, I've done a few can see there, but we've removed the mud from the tread. So now we've got, well, I can use my fingers, great. So now we've got a muddy tire, but the tread is clear, which it would be in real life. And you can see we've got the build up on the outside there. So we could just sort of rub that around if we want to, just to, oh yeah, this, this is great. <laughs> you can have some fun with this. It's like being a, 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 an infant again, where you get, you know, playing in the, with the ball pit with paint and all that in it and stuff. Let's just remove the, most of that. So there we can see we have a muddy tire. And I think it's going to dry matte, but if it dries glossy, it'll be a wet look. But if, it, if you want it matte, then, because mud doesn't dry glossy, it dries matte, um, then it would just be a case of uh, just putting a matte or a gloss varnish on or whatever. So we'll just get this wet cotton bud and remove the excess from here. And then use my finger to wipe off. Also of note, this is Revell Aqueous Paint and the water is not attacking it, so that's good to know. And then the mud that's on the tyre, we're not going to worry about that because it's it, that's how it would be anyway. Okay, so do the same on this one. Obviously these are getting easier and easier to remove because it's quicker to remove it than it is to brush it on. Look at that bloody cotton bud breaking. Goodbye. And then rub it with my finger. Fingers are such great tools. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? There we are. So you can see that we've got a build-up of mud in the treads, which is which is how they would be if it, you know, if it was it was muddy yesterday, sort of thing. I think I've already done this one, haven't I? Yes, I have. They're very sticky. That'll be the glue aspect of it. Right. So there we go. Get a bit more mud in the inside of that one. I haven't done much as far as the inside of the tires have gone. So I need to get some mud in there. Oops. But the brush is too long, the handle's too long. can soon sort that. Goodbye. Handy stirring stick. There we are. Now we can stand it up. <laughs> That's that sorted. Right. I'm just going to rub my finger around. Get the mud off the treads. And there we are. So you can see, once again, we've got a nice muddy tyre like it's been driven in mud but it's not in mud today right i'm going to go and wash my hands and then we're going to come back and we're going to get some mud onto there okay we're back so i'm just going to add another drop of water just a drop just to kind of thin this out a little bit more there we go and i think what we'll do is Get rid of this piece of paper towel from the bench because it's probably messing up the camera. So what I'm going to do now is just put some mud in the wheel arches. Now, I believe we have to... We, I say I believe because I haven't done this before. I believe we have to think about reality and we have to think about how things are in real life. Now, if you have a vehicle that has driven down a really muddy lane... In the middle of June, where you've had a massive downpour the night before, but it's like the middle of summer, say, um, it's going to get caked in mud, and the mud is going to go on there and stick and dry and clog up everything. If it's the middle of November, and it's a really muddy, boggy, crap place, yeah, something like this is not going to get through it. It's just going to get stuck. So we have to remember, it's something like a tank is different. It's going to get absolutely plastered in mud. But something like this, it won't even get through. They won't even, probably wouldn't even attempt. 
And if you're going to model this as being like, you know, going to an airfield to get rescue, rescue crew members or whatever, coming back from a, a, a bomb raid and they're injured or whatever, then it won't be that caked in mud, but it will have mud splashed up on it. But you have to remember that in the winter time, when it's going through big puddles and stuff, the mud gets washed away. So I'm going to do this as like not absolutely plastered and caked in mud, but more sort of like it's been used. So it's going to have some mud in it. So what I'm going to do is just in the wheel arches, is just paint some mud in here. And I'm going to see, because as I say, this is all new to me, I'm going to see if I can play with it and stipple it and mess with it once it's starting to dry. So the whole of the wheel arch would be muddy. It wouldn't necessarily be caked in mud. Go look at your car. It won't be, I mean, you've probably never driven your car through mud, but general road grime and stuff, it gets everywhere. Okay, because it splashes around. Just like so. So I've done that in there and I'm going to try and play with that and see if I can mess with it. And then we can add, add some pigments to it and stuff later. Same on the back. Now the mud flaps, it wouldn't stick to that very well because they've, they're rubber and they move around. But you would get mud up here. And you'd get mud down here. So I'm going to, and I'm not putting it everywhere, I'm just putting it down the middle. I'm not plastering it around everywhere. I'm just putting it down the middle. Because remember, we can always play later with pigments and stuff. Less is more. I think once this has gone down, I think we're going to be sort of pretty much stuck with it. Now, I just want to add some mud to the edges here. Where it's been flicked up. That's some there as well. There we go, a bit flicked up on there, a bit flicked up on there. Just to see how it comes out. As I say, we've kind of gone from a beginner's tutorial to a beginner's, I'm the beginner. And don't worry, this, this is literally just the start. This is, this is just the start before we start playing with pigments and stuff. And I can see that starting to dry in there. So I'm wondering if I can sort of stipple it and get that rough finish. <clears throat> Like you get in your wheel arches, you know, if you look at your car, it's like a rough sort of pebble dash finish, the dirt. There we go. Remember the front, the front will always be dirtier than the back because the front steers and it sort of picks up the mud and it throws, throws the mud up and down. So the, the rear wheels are just sat in there spinning around in one, in one uh, orientation. So now I'm going to add some mud to this rear step. That'll do. Just sort of let it build up on there a bit. So on those mud flaps at the back. There we go. I'm trying to take it now from looking like brushed on glue and stuff to real mud, which is proven a little difficult. But I think when I do the pigments, I think when I use the pigments, it will be, uh, it'll be a lot easier. There we go. So I'm happy with that. So I've got mud in there. It's got a kind of bit of a rough finish to it. What I'm going to try now 
with the camera still on, I'm going to try and see if I can get some of this lighter colour, this green earth, and just stipple it in and get a bit of tonal variation going on. So it's just not one brown colour. When that dries, that should look a lot more effective than just having the brown colour in there. And it looks like the more you stipple it, the lighter it gets, the darker it gets. There you go. It's probably got some tonal variation in there as well. It's not just all dark brown mud. I think I need to put some more mud in there actually. Get some in on the chassis and that. There we go, you can see we've got a sort of layer of mud built up in there now. I think we might just see if I can get some of this into the tyres just to try and add a, a bit of colour variation going around the tyre because you generally will see colours change in the dirt or whatever. We're going to be putting more pigments on these wheels anyway. But um, I'm not sure if I like that. Stick with it because we've done one, we may as well do them all. There we go. There's a sort of tonal variation on the tyres. So let's see how that looks. You can see that straight away it's sort of, rather than being a piece of painted plastic, it's kind of starting to come to life. Where's a rear wheel? There we go. So we can see that the whole, the whole thing is starting to come to life. Right, so I am going to leave it there and let that dry. Um, I think we've done enough. Get a bit more mud and just stipple it in there. As I say, this is all new to me. This mud on the back, I, I almost forgot about it. I'm going to get a wet, wet cotton bud. And just kind of rub it around so we'll have the mud on the edges but where people have been walking they will obviously rub the mud off perhaps I'll get a little bit of this a tiny bit of this in there As I say, we're going to be going in heavily with pigments and stuff. Playing with it. This could take hours, but it's, it's not going to be hours of video, don't worry. But um, you are actually, what you're watching here is live on camera. Well, not live, but you're watching me potentially mess this up. I find these floral pigments are not as fine as the um, 
big ones. I'm going to have to get some more wet in there because I've got too much of the light colour in there. But it looks bloody awful. There we go. So there's a nice sort of mud finish going on. Hopefully you like it. I, uh, I will see what I think of it when it dries. But um, I don't think there's any going back now. Wipe that down as it would be with rain or whatever, it would take the mud away. Or maybe they give it a wipe down now and again. I'm sure the Queen looked after hers very, very well. There we go. And I think because we've got a clear cut on there, it's making it possible to sort of knock back anything we've put on there. There we are, right. I'll see you in a few seconds, maybe in the morning for me. Okay, so here we are next morning now. I've been having a little play. Um, as I say, it's a little bit difficult to make a video when I don't really know what I'm doing myself. So I've got to have a play and see what happens. So what I've done, this um, this colour, this green earth, I'm liking it because it's it's much lighter, obviously, than the, than the, the brown stuff we used. And it kind of gives, if, if you look at these wheels, kind of gives a realistic dry mud look because as we know mud as it as mud dries it lightens and the other thing is I've gone inside here with that um, MIG ammo pigment if you remember and in there it's a very very light dust so it'd be stupid to have like a really dark dust on here so what I've discovered and I've done it off camera so that I'm not sort of showing you anything wrong what I've discovered if I go over the mud that I put down last night with some oil okay just wet there what we'll do is we'll do down here I just wet the area, okay, I get some pigment, and just brushing it, there's a big piece of fluff there, it's from the cotton buds, I just get some of this pigment and just brush it in, it kind of, like it dissolves into the, into the wash, but you can see, you can see it's leaving a, a kind of texture, which is really good, but the beauty of it is, it's not actually permanent, it's not fixed. So we can just do that, wet everything, get some of the pigment, put it on. Just brush it in so we get like a muddy, as it would get a sort of, it's not getting splashed with mud as it, as it were, but there's, it's the bottom of a vehicle, it's gonna get dusty and dirty. So we can do the same in here. And what I've discovered, and I'm going to show you this, this is why I've turned the camera on, is we can put this in here and then we can remove it to our tastes. So it may be too much, it may be too thick. And the other beauty of it is, you can see here, I'm going in areas where it's going to be very difficult to access to rub it off. Let's just get rid of that there. I go into areas where it's going to be difficult to access to rub it off, which adds to the realism because that's how it would really be in real life. It would build up in nooks and crannies where it's not getting any water spray or air around it or anything like that. But it will... It will come off where it's getting blown around or washed or splashed or whatever. It will come off. And of course, where people get in and out, where people touch it. Remember, we've got to do the interior floor as well, because it's no good having like muddy steps like that on the back and then have a perfectly clean floor inside. It wouldn't be like that. I'm assuming it would get regularly mopped. OK, so you can see that there now, what I've done. I'm not going to bother doing that in the middle. Well, at least not yet anyway. But you can see this is the difference here. This is still slightly wet and that's dry. You can see the difference in colour. I can come along with a cotton bud and just remove some of it and makes and it makes a darker sort of you can see it's fairly realistic in that we've got this this mud here. Yeah. 
I'm on the back of the wheel actually and I've put it on and then sort of rubbed it off. Don't worry about the shininess, we're going to give it a, a, clear, a clear coat. But um, you can see there, on the back of that wheel arch, we've got the we've got the mud that's been up, but it's been rubbed off by people rubbing past it, getting in and out and stuff. So, uh, and then here, I can just rub the excess away on the fuel tank. Same here, just rub it away. And, uh, and you can see as it starts to dry, it lightens in colour. We'll put some more over here. Put some more in there. Just like so. So there we are. We shall uh, let that dry and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do with it to... Um, Make it look a little bit more realistic. I need to put some up there as well, don't I? Like it's been. Get plenty on there. Just like that. There we go. Right. Let's leave that to dry. Oh, and on the wheels, I've done the same thing. I just brushed some on and then go around with a cotton bud just removed it from the sort of inner area of the tire and it's left a, a blotchy sort of finish on the on the tire and then we've got some in the wheel as well just get rid of that and this is the thing with with weathering I don't I, I must be honest I don't particularly enjoy it um, and I'm not any good at it as you can see but uh, it's 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 a messy old affair. You can see my modelled in board is a mess. But um, there we go. We will. Uh, I didn't do the side of that chassis, did I? We will let that dry, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay. So while that's drying, it's it's nearly dry, but I want it to be totally dry before I start messing with it. Um, I'm going to do some streaking. Now I've got these, I've only got these two. This is Winter Grime and Cold Dirty Grey. These are the streaking brushes. Um, ammo sent me these, Ming Ammo uh, sent me these. I've got um, oil brushes here. I've got a few different colours. I did a review when, this, when all this arrived. And I've got a white and I've got a tan colour there. Um, I'm just, I'm, I don't really want to go with the white, I don't think. I may go with this dust colour here. I'll show you what I'll do with these and I'll just give them a good shake. This is the winter grime colour and you will see that this colour is pretty much the same colour as the as the, um, the paint itself. So I'm just going to dab some on here. Just get some more on here. And I think this would be a really nice effect because it's going to be extremely subtle. I'm just going to come from everywhere where there's a where there's an edge. Okay. I'm running out of places I can hold it soon. But I think this will dry pretty quickly. Okay, so that just put some there, put some there. Yep, I think that's good enough. Do some on the doors. This is just to make it look sort of dirty, really. Put some there. Doesn't need to be done in any particular way. And we'll just leave that to dry out. I think it looks like it's drying. Yeah, it's drying very quickly. That's good. Okay, so we just leave that to dry out and then we can play with that. So that's a bit of streaking. Um, you know, you can tell your friends you saw me streak live on screen. <laughs> so, here we go. And as you can see, I've done a bit here. I've brushed it away. You, you can kind of get this sort of ground on dirt look to it. And just by the amount you brush it or the amount you don't brush it, you just... 
you can see you can kind of get rid of it or leave it on there whatever and uh, as I say this is not my field of expertise but um, you're sort of with me for the ride and you can see there I've kind of left the dirt built up in the corner as it would be on the real thing so it kind of gives it an authentic look and also the, the body of it you know the, the, the graininess of it kind of looks pretty realistic as well so there we are let's get some of this streaker on there as well this is the lighter colour just weird brushes in here they're very um you'd almost think they're faulty they're very stiff Just put some on the doors at the back. And the effect of this, it looks, at the moment, it looks extremely garish. I know, and you're probably thinking, oh my God, what are you doing? But don't worry, in a minute you'll see. I have done this before. You'll see um, what kind of look we can get with it. So, we're going to let all that dry, and then I'll be back. I seem to say that a lot, don't I? Okay, so 15 minutes about we've left this. So these these streaking, I've put some white on there as well. Um, so they're pretty much dry, pretty much. So in here I've got some odorless thinners. This is um I got this from Amazon. It works really, really well for modeling that stuff there, Pebio. Um you need to look around carefully on Amazon because look at the volume because sometimes they'll show you a bottle and you think well, that one's £6, and the one next to it is £8. Well, it might be that this 245 mil is £8, and the one they're showing you is that size. <laughs> so just be careful what you're buying. Um, but don't use turpentine. Um, i even avoid enamel thinners if I were you. Just use odourless, odourless spirit, odourless mineral spirit, whatever, um, and it won't attack the plastic. Um, so I've got a brush here. This is a new brush. These are just cheap and nasty humble heller brushes they're horrible things but i bought a pack of about 10 of them and um they're great for doing stuff like this so i've got some odorless thinners on the brush and then you can see i've removed most of it and all i'm going to do is come along here and pull this down as you can see it's quite messy to start with okay we'll, we'll just do this panel here and i'll do the rest off camera we can see it's quite messy to start with. And then we get the brush in the thinners again. Just clean the brush off. And just keep going. And you will see that what happens, you will start to see this kind of discoloration of the surface in a downward don't worry about this along here we'll sort that in a minute and this is why we seal everything in with varnish what we can see is it's sort of discoloration in a vertical pattern all right now it's very difficult to see on the camera but in there there are three colors there's white there's the the streaking grime and the winter whatever it's called but when that dries it'll look incredible um, because it'll just be so so subtle you'll hardly see it but it just it just really really will make it pop okay so I'm gonna leave that and let it dry and then I can show you what it looks like. And the beauty of it is with the oils and everything, as I say, if I don't like it, I can get, get a damp cloth and just wipe it off. Get some more brushes and just brush it off. But when that dries, that will have a really nice look to it. If anything, I think there's a problem with this. This brush seems to be very hard. It's sort of softened up. I think it probably had something in the bristles. It was, I got it fresh out of the bag. It's brand new. But, um, there we go. That's a lot better. The brush is softer now. It's softened up. 
you can hear when I was doing it before you could hear it sort of tapping on it now it's it's softer okay so if you want to see me do the I, I did this when I did a mark IV tank World War one tank I did it with all lots of different colors on the tank and because you got all the rivets and the raised detail it really does make it pop with this it's a bit more difficult to make it pop because it's just a flat surface but what I want to get I want to get that kind of canvasy sort of drawn look so we'll just do this while I'm on camera, we'll do a bit of this roof. I can't see what I'm doing because of the reflection of the light. So we just pull that down just like that, with the same as it on the side. Just pull that down. I can't see what I'm doing. Probably now you can't see what I'm doing because of the reflection. You just want to get rid of those spots of white and then just Pull it down, just like so. And what I'll do is I'll brush this one less, I'll leave this one a bit heavier like that. But I do want to get rid of that white up in the corner, I don't want that right up in there. There we go. Here we are. So I'll do the rest and then I'll come back and you can see that as this is starting to dry, you can see on there it's it's very very subtle very subtle indeed but um and also as it starts to dry you can go with a dry brush and work it again so uh i'll see you in a minute when i've done the right so making a mess here having a great time <laughs> um dear 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 what's going on right so i've put a little bit of black wash in these wheel centers a lot of static and a lot of dog hairs um just to sort of highlight those centers a bit and it kind of makes them look a bit sort of dirty and oily like they would be if the gaskets were leaking or whatever uh, i've also put some black around the leaf springs just to sort of highlight them a bit now you can see on here we've got the streaking going on i'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera you can see you have a bit of a sheen to it which doesn't help now the the sort of brush marks that are in there you can soften them out with your finger look on the roof I've used my finger again to kind of turn it into a so it's just like an area that's blotchy rather than it running anywhere. Do the same on there, and like I said, just use your finger any way you like, and it just softens the effect. And you and what, what we've got here is this kind of tarnished look. Now on the front here, there's a little bit too much, so I'm going to take a cotton bud. Just wipe away. I could get a drop of um, odorless thinners on there and then just remove some to get rid of that because it's too, it's, it's sort of lightened it too much. There we go. And then what we can do is just to balance that out, just go over it with the brush and that will take out any sort of marks that were left by the cotton bud yeah and it's all it's all just a case of just letting it dry and as i've said before a million times i think in this video series um you know, the doors are, i can rub it on there um as i've said in this video series and, and millions of times in my other videos you know this is the beauty with oils you can just play with them and play with them if you don't like it just get a damp you know a cloth dampen it with the thinners and wipe it off and it'll all just come off like up here, you see I've got this white area along there. I don't, I don't like that. I want to just get rid of that. I'm just going to brush it away. There we go. Jess is due to go to the groomers in a few days. And uh, hopefully that will break down the hairs. Reduce the hair, should I say. You can see we've got a deposit of white along the edge here. There we go. So that's been an hour. <laughs> so sorry guys, um, sorry it went on a bit, but we, we got there in the end. And as I say, this was a bit of a learning curve for me as well. Okay, so I've given the model a flat coat. It's had some Tamiya LP23. And I hope you can see on there, we've got the effects from all the oils and everything all looking good. So um, happy with that. I'll do some photographs at the end of this video and you'll see how good it looks. Um, so basically what I'm doing now, I've got the the two, these are the two Flory ones, the two Flory, so we'll see how they work. Because 
they're quite grainy they're not as they're not as fine as other pigments I've used which is good for building up dirt and stuff so what I'm doing here I've got a mixture of the two because I found one is very light and one is very dark and then what I'm doing is just dabbing this on I'll show you how this works and I've got I've forgotten I had this this is a uh, Old Big Productions pigment fixer. I think it's basically enamel thinners. They call it an enamel blend or something. I don't know, but uh, it was like six pound a bottle, six ninety five, and I've probably had this ten years. So a bit of a rip off, but never mind. Um, so uh, I've just brushed some pigments in there and I put some fixer on them. And because the fixer is not sort of absolutely rock hard, you you can still remove it. So all I'm going to do. Is with the brush I'm just going to put some some of my pigment there to simulate mud being splashed upon the side and then just get a drop of this and just tap it as I say you could do the same thing with enamel thinners any pigment any enamel thinners you don't have to buy specific products then we're going to put some on the back here. I mean, what you can do here is put the fixer on first, and then just grab some of the pigment and dab it on. As you can see, it's falling down there onto the chassis, so we can grab some of the fixer and just fix that in place. You can see the fixer makes it all turn very dark in colour. Get some more on there. Just going to get some. Let's just wet that fuel tank. And just get some on there. You can see it's a very messy operation. It's probably best to have like a paper towel to hang down or something. Obviously, I haven't done that because it would just make the camera go loopy. I'm going to put some more down here, I think. There we go. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's dry. And if we want to add some more, we can add some more. If we want to take some off, we can take some off. As I say, I've, I've repeated myself a load of times, I am not the world's best weather, I can assure you. So you can see this here is almost dry, so I can sort of rub that and make it a lot less. I should have shown you before I rubbed it, shouldn't I? Duh. I'll show you when I do another bit in a minute. Really, if you're doing this, you don't really want to go touching your models too much because you will tend to wear them off. Put some here. I much prefer this colour, to be honest. The, the, the dark was too dark and the light was too light. And I guess that's just me being fussy. So I'll put some fixer there. And then we'll put some pigment on it, just like so. I think we'll get some on here as well, just like dust sitting in there. There we go. And I'm also going to put some on the steps, so let's get some. Are on the steps. We've got quite a nice build up going on here on these steps. And the problem now I've got the, the fixer is now transferred onto the brush, so it's becoming it's a it's a dark heart. This uh pigments and fixers and all this it's um i've got videos on it which i should really watch before i make my video shouldn't i but um 
And as I say, uh, these pigments are very grainy in comparison to like the MIG pigments and stuff. So and the AK ones. So you know, they're they're not exactly the same. Drop a fixer on there. As you can see, we can kind of build up a bit of a mud layer in there. Fixer, dab it on. You can see there we've got quite a mud layer built up. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'll come back and show you when you can rub it about and everything. And the people ask why you seal things in. This is why I say I've got a finger mark there, a pigment. I can just wipe that off. Let's see, I've just wiped loads more on there. So it's, uh, I need to clean my hands. So as I say, I'm not the... Um, in fact, what I do want to do is put some on these doors because that's what happens, isn't it? On, in fact, we'll put the pigment on first. That's what happens on vehicles. You get the the back draft sort of pulls dirt up onto the back, doesn't it? It's a bit too much there. And then what I should be able to do afterwards is just rub my finger over this and make it all appear a lot more gentle. And hopefully you can see that on the steps how that's drying out. You've got this build up of mud there. So we'll give that a rest, let that dry out, and then I'll come back. Right, a couple of hours have gone by. You can see it's sat on its wheels. Don't worry, I haven't uh, glued them on without you around. Um, I've added some mud on the inside. As you can see on there, quite possibly we've got a bit of a muddy floor. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this this great big thing here, it's like, it's like a scrubbing brush. And I'm just going to scrub down the centre the dog hair don't worry about the plastic bag you can see there it's got the mirrors in it just scrub down the center do the same on the steps here and we can just remove what we want let's get these doors closed just like so and then on the back you see i can just come down and brush along and just remove any any loose or whatever and it will leave on there a really realistic looking little sort of build up of mud you can see on the bottom of that mud guard there. So same here, you can see on the side we've got this mud here powdered on. So if I just brush away, I can just leave like a, a kind of muddy stain. It's showing up a lot more on the camera than it is in real life because it's um it's dead flat as opposed to the slightly gloss matte. You rub it with your finger and reduce it. It just becomes like a dirty stain. I've also put some more on the inside so that the colour more matches the dirt that I've got inside. Honestly, like I say, I've called this a beginner's video and I've actually ended up learning from this. So, turn it over. Same on this side. Just brush away. I can rub it with my finger. I can get a cotton bud. Rub it. Just remove the excess, just like so. And there we go. Now, while I was off camera, I also put some of this with the uh, fixer on the tires. So I'm just gonna go around with the brush on the tires just remove that if you notice the tires have got a slight sheen to them and that's cool because tires do have a slight sheen to them this 
especially when they're fairly new. And this vehicle, because it's not all dented and beat up, is fairly new. So you can see there the wheel now, the wheels now match the the rest of the vehicle and the mud that we've got on there. So final part of the video, final part of the build, we are going to get the wheels glued on. So the first thing we need to do is grab a knife. In fact, I'm going to grab a stick, a coarse sanding stick. And just remove any paint or pigment or whatever we've got built up on this hub. So we're not just back to tan plastic. You can see we've got a build up there of the um, of the mud mixture. So we just remove that like that and then sand away the little bit that's left. Do the same on the back. Turn her over, do the same on here. And there we go. So those wheels now are just going to glue on there like so. Okay, so we can come along with our white Tamiya glue. Just put some around there. Now, if you remember right back to the beginning of this build, which was ages ago, when we looked at doing the, um, the chassis I talked about having the wheels up in the air and if we had one wheel up in the air I was going to show you what to do kind of unfortunate we don't have a wheel up in the air so I can't show you what to do so but I have actually I have actually started making a, a range of videos on doing chassis this this actually prompted me to do it so I've done one I'm going to do some more videos on how to build chassis and how to get it all square and your wheels all on the ground and everything. Just a few little tips and techniques that I use. And that should be a great help for the newer modelers out there. Or even the more experienced modelers who struggle with uh, getting the chassis square and everything. Because it's kind of when engineering gets into the modelling. It's not really engineering, it's, but it's going along that road. Can see how fast that glue works so we now have our ambulance complete and she sat on all four tires the only thing that's left to do is put the mirrors on but I'm not going to put the mirrors on right now because I'm still not sure that I'm done with it I'm still not sure that I'm done with it just want to try something a second. I'm going to get some of this pigment fixer. Just get a drop on a cotton bud. You can see we've got this mark here. I just wonder if it can be removed. Yes it can. We had a hard line there where the pigment fixer. I've got the same here look. We can just wet it again and get rid of the hard, the hard line. There we go. Look at that. So now we've got like dirty mud running down the back of the door, and this brush has shed about a thousand bristles on the model. I chucked that in the bin, really, didn't I? So um, there we go. Maybe use this one. So we can see on the back doors there we've got the the mud, which is sort of running down and I think I mean like I say this is this is not my forte it's not the sort of thing I'm really into I don't even really enjoy it to be honest weathering um, but 
it's, I think it's something you can spend hours and hours and hours doing. As I say, I'm, I'm not going to take the masking off the windows yet. We're going to call this done, I think. But I'm, you know what, I may well do some more to it. And I think what I'll do, if I do any more to it, I won't do it on camera. But I will put some pictures up at the end of this video, which will be done like in a week's time or whatever. And uh, see if I've done any more to it. So I'll see you back. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, as I say, there's going to be some pictures and a bit of wartime music played now. For you to look. But you can see we've got the... It's all done. And the only reason I don't want to unmask the windows, and this, this should be a lesson to you guys too as well. Um, don't ever unmask your windows until you're absolutely sure that you're finished. Because if I do something else... Like if I decide I want to seal in all these pigments with a matte varnish, I'd have to mask the windows again. It's just easier just to leave them. But, um, you know, we'll just have a quick look round there. So it is lovely. We get that bag out of there. So there we go. See down inside there now. And if you remember we had that door open down in there. We should put the right way up for you. Remember we had that door open down in there leading into the cab obviously when the windscreen mask is removed you'll be a lot brighter in there but uh, you can see the dirt we've put on the floor now see the wood grain on the floor see the dirt all up the mud guards we've got our doors like so obviously if you are a beginner you're not going to attempt that but if you've moved on a bit with your model and you've got some drills give it a go give it a go you can see the streaking down here, you can see the dirt built up on the bottom here, you can see the dirt built up on all the tyres, got the dirt all on the front of the mudguard there. I really could do with putting some more black oil around that grill I think. But, um, you know, it, you, the thing is, people say with, with models like this they're never finished. Um, you know, you could just go on and on and on and on. You know, I could add moss to the roof, I could have a broken window, a flat tire, you know, whatever. There's lots and lots of stuff you can do to uh, to keep going. But that's, I, I've got the finish I wanted to. So um, I haven't put any oil stains on here because I think these were petrol, not diesel. So petrol wouldn't leave a stain like, like, like diesel would. It would just be covered with dirt, whereas diesel is an oil that leaves a dirt behind. But um, all in all, I'm really happy with how that's come out. So I'll say a big thank you to you guys for watching and um, hopefully we'll do another one soon and you'll join along for that one. But uh, I'm waiting for that Airfix Spitfire to turn up. That should be any time soon I guess. It's been talking about it for months and once we get that then we can go. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon guys. Bye for now. <laughs>